Forty miles to the south, and rising out of a harsh brown landscape, is a vast body of water called the Salton Sea. It seems almost too good to be true. An inland lake in the middle of the desert. This is California's crown jewel of biodiversity, a sanctuary for millions of migrating waterfowl. The Salton Sea is host to more species of birds than any other place, save perhaps for the Gulf Coast of Texas. Half of all bird species found in the United States can be found at the Salton Sea. So it's this massive truck stop, we like to say, a key location for birds to stop, eat, rest along their trip either north and south along this Pacific Flyway. But as recently as 100 years ago, there was no water here. It was a huge, dried out salt basin. The remains of ancient lakes that over time evaporated into the desert air. But in 1905, everything changed. That's when violent winter storms caused the Colorado River to go on a rampage. In the spring, the swollen river suddenly jumped its banks. The entire flow of the Colorado surged into the Salton Basin. Farmland and homes were washed away. For 18 months, engineers waged a fierce battle. When the river returned to its original course, what was left behind was the Salton Sea. Today, this is the largest inland body of water in California. For four months, temperatures soar over 100 degrees. Over six feet of water is lost to evaporation every year. But unlike the lakes of ancient times, it hasn't dried up. This Salton Sea is very different than those previous Salton Seas. It's not this great lake that becomes uh, massive and dries up and massive and dries up. It's a lake that's largely sustained by man's activities, particularly agriculture. 500,000 acres of rich farmland carpet the neighboring Imperial and Coachella Valleys. Once a desert wasteland, today these farms provide nearly 85% of the nation's winter vegetable crop. What makes this billion dollar industry possible is Colorado River water. Enough water to satisfy the yearly needs of a city of 24 million. But intensive irrigation also produces massive amounts of runoff. The drain water that comes off of our fields and the fields in Coachella uh, flow naturally into the Salton Sea. And there's uh, pretty close to a million acre feet of, uh, of water that runs into the Salton Sea every year. There's no flow out of it. So anything that flows into there stays there. An enhanced satellite photograph shows a landlocked Salton Sea. Surrounded by mountains and desert, the green areas to the north and south are irrigated agricultural development. These farms are the source of drain water that keeps the sea from drying up. But it's a resource that presents a major paradox. What feeds the Salton Sea is slowly killing it. The agricultural drain water contains enormous amounts of salt and chemicals. Over the years, it has become 25% saltier than the ocean. Several decades ago, the sea's ecosystem began to suffer. In the 1980s, outbreaks of botulism and algae blooms killed millions of fish. 
and then the birds began to die. Today, the shoreline often serves as a graveyard for thousands of waterfowl. In one three-month period, 150,000 eared grebes died. Though the exact cause remains unknown, most scientists believe the dead birds fed on tainted fish. What is known is that the die-offs changed the public's perception of the sea. The Salton Sea is a maligned resource in many ways because it's been discarded. It was uh, well used in the 1960s as folks came out here, built marinas and developments around the shoreline, used the Salton Sea to uh, fish and to boat and water ski. That heyday is now gone. If you go around the Salton Sea today, you see the remnants of the 1960s and the early 1970s. Those marinas and hotels are gone now and dilapidated now. And we don't have the visitation that we once did for all sorts of factors. One of them is folks' fear. Today, the biggest fear is that if the sea gets saltier, it won't be able to support any life. Robert Schrag from the California State Wildlife and Game Service is monitoring the fishery. Right now we're out gill netting, trying to find important information regarding age, size, weight, reproductive status. It's what we need to know to find out what's going on with the fish populations. Worst case scenario of the sea is it remains on the way it's going and basically becomes too salty to uh, handle the fish uh, so that they can reproduce. And if that happens, we're going to lose some of the fish eating birds, actually most of the fish eating birds. It's an important part of the ecosystem here. Though recent tests indicate the salinity of the sea is still low enough for fish to reproduce, there exists another serious threat and it's all about who owns the rights to Colorado River water. Released on demand from the Hoover Dam, the water that sustains the Salton Basin travels 1,400 miles. Just before the river crosses into Mexico, much of its volume is diverted into a series of canals, eventually bringing life to the farms of the Imperial and Coachella Valleys. Today, these farms consume half of California's share of Colorado River water, more than Los Angeles and San Diego combined. This has long been the focus of legal battles with the water-starved communities of Southern California. In the West, for you to establish a right to water, you have to get to it and use it. The environment, unfortunately, doesn't have as much standing as farmers and cities and the like particularly along the Colorado River. In an historic agreement, farmers have agreed to sell to San Diego County enough water to satisfy the needs of two million people each year. But this has also trapped the Salton Sea between the needs of its fragile ecosystem and the conflicting interests of farmers and developers. For every drop of water being moved to the urban California coast, to San Diego, that means one drop less of water flowing into the Salton Sea. Keeping the Salton Sea alive isn't necessary for us to keep farming, and, and in some ways it's almost detrimental because if the, if the Salton Sea is to be mandated to stay alive, then we have to be careful of uh, the quality of our drain water that goes off there. And from a farming standpoint, we look at it as an agricultural sump to which it was designated. If those flows stop coming to the Salton Sea, we'll see a immediate decline in the fishery and an immediate decline in the health of the Salton Sea and our ability to sustain the environmental bounty that we currently sustain. One of the things that I'm concerned about with the Salton Sea is that as the flows into the sea are reduced, the sea will get smaller. And as the sea gets smaller, lake bed will be exposed. Estimates are somewhere between 70 and 100 square miles of lake bed won't be covered with water anymore. <laughs> 